today's episode, we will be showcasing how Patrice Mitsippi spends his billions and how rich he is. This includes his car collection that's worth millions and his biggest multi-million dollar mansion in Africa. Plus, we will showcase his businesses and net worth updates. All the information that will be released have supporting evidence and facts on hard record display. All you need to do right now is to stay put and get yourself some snacks or popcorn for you to enjoy this interesting video. Let me first quickly introduce to you who's Patrice Mutsupi. Well, he is famous for being the first person in history of Africa to be a billionaire. Patrice became a billionaire in year 2008 and was the first person in Africa to be ranked by Forbes. He is the former richest man in Africa from 2008 to 2011. Now, enough with the short documentary lets us talk about how many companies and investments he has today. As majority of people know that Patrice is a full-time entrepreneur who owns various companies in South Africa. His first company is African Rainbow Minerals, which deals with mining resources similar to Anglo-American. The company arm was founded in year 2003 and he was the first African miner in the whole continent. Well, the company is currently worth 60 billion rands on its market capitalism stock. The company has produced mass number of gold and platinum so far. Number 2. Patrice invested in Time Bank Group. Plus, he is the majority shareholder in the company through African Rainbow Capital. Personally, I think Time Bank is a huge flop or mistake, because the bank has no profile or publicity and many people don't use it. Please comment down your thoughts about this Time Bank investment. Number 3. He invested in the new network and telecommunications company called Rain. It's one of the most popular network company in South Africa. That is offering data and communication services around South Africa. Patrice is one of the shareholders in Rain Company and owning 20.2%. Number 4. He also invested some of his money to a Fremit mining company back in year 2016. Patrice Company Arc bought 18% of the stake in a Fremit mining. Overall, he invested in various mining companies across South Africa including Harmony Gold. Also with other companies like Bowman Gilfillan and Comity Nickel Mine and Cato Ridge Mine. Those are all the mine Patrice Mutsipi invested his fortune on. Number 5. He recently bought a wine farm for a price of 100 million rands. Patrice wants to join the alcohol industry since 43% of the people drink alcohol in South Africa. Before I forget, at number 6, Patrice also owns a football soccer club and it's called the Mamelodi Sundowns. He bought the club back in year 2004 and today it's worth 382 million rands according to News24 website. Those are all the businesses that made him the first billionaire in Africa, according to Forbes magazine website. Personally, I believe that he's just an investor who likes to place his money in other companies. For those who didn't know, Patrice stays at a 100 million rands mega mansion in Cape Town. It stands as one of the most biggest and expensive houses in South Africa. But I don't like it, he must do better on his house. If you made it this far, just quickly please subscribe to the channel and like this video. Most importantly, Please share this video using the link. Moving to his car collection. The majority will be surprised. Patrice owns a Mercedes Maybach, that's worth around 6 million rands. On other hand, he owns a Bugatti Veyron. Well, the price for it is 45 million rands, can you imagine? It's reported from other secret sources out there. Patrice bought a Bugatti Veyron back in year 2008, after he became a billionaire. His Bugatti Veyron was spotted mostly in Cape Town, long time ago. Comment down below and tell me what you think about him owning a Bugatti. What's interesting is that his brother-in-law the president of South Africa owns a Bugatti Sharon. There's a lot going on here with Cyril Ramaphosa. Overall, those are the cars that were seen and believed to be owned by him. But he's mostly being driven by his bodyguards. The other information was kept a secret. As you might not expect, Patrice Mutsipi owns a 1 billion rand private jet. He was seen multiple time using it to transit to other countries. I wish I could own a private jet one day. About his net worth, Patrice Mitsipi is currently worth $3.6 billion as of year 2023. According to Zalab's website, he stands as the one and only black billionaire in South Africa since 2008. Overall he's the richest black person in South Africa. Well, that's all about Patrice and his lifestyle in year 2023. That is a problem that young people all over the world experiences. Not just young people in Rwanda or Tanzania or Uganda or South Africa, all over the world. 
You know, I was president of, of business in South Africa and uh, we had meetings with thousands of entrepreneurs and young entrepreneurs. And some say, I go to the bank and ask for money and they want security and they want collateral. Now, I've just started. Security means I've got something to give the bank that the bank will take in case, I, default. In, in case I don't pay my money. So they want security, I don't have security. They want collateral, I don't have collateral. And I can't, in the first instance, get, get a loan. But the second thing, if I do succeed to get a loan, the interest rates are so high mm -hmm. that I spend the first five years with nothing for myself, but all going back to the bank. So what we need to do is if we want to stimulate entrepreneurship, and I'll tell you something interesting. If you look at America, for example, America is still the country, unlike any other, that gives loans and facilities and finance at a very competitive rate. Mm -hmm. So what we will have to do in Africa, your commercial banks will not, will not provide the sort of soft loans that will allow entrepreneurs to succeed. And another key issue, of course, is that we are not asking for loans for businesses that are not sustainable or profitable. Mm. We're talking about those that are competitive, that are sustainable and that are profitable, should be considered for loans. Part of the solution has to be that, you know, the governments will have to play a role. It's not... Uh, there was a, a gentleman called Professor Yunus uh, with the Brumi Putra Bank. Uh, in, um, he got a Nobel Peace Prize. We met him many years ago. And uh, they are working, they've got this microfinance for women. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's doing, they're doing exceptionally, exceptionally well. But we can explore microfinance, but we are living in an era where there's a need for new thinking innovation, new ways of doing things, including new ways of providing finance to the youth that will allow them to, in the first instance, get the loan for the businesses that deserve the loans, and in the second instance, be in a position to pay back those loans and, and have capital uh, that they can use for future growth. Right. Please make sure to subscribe on this channel and like this video for us to grow Marshall TV channel. Don't forget to comment and share this video using the link. Goodbye fans.